questions that I never even quite checked. Let's look at Oh, perfect. Thanks, Aaron. <laughs> All right, guys. So we are going to talk today a little bit about um, where we are, um, actually what we've accomplished this semester um, in regards to assessment, um, where we are right now, kind of the status and some of the projects, and then we're going to talk a little bit about um, what's next. Um, there's going to be, we're going to be going a little bit more in depth than that in our final open forum. So we're not going to touch too much today on what's going on next. We'll have a little bit of a deeper dive on that. Um, but just to talk a little bit about what we've accomplished um, and where we are right now. So just as a reminder, I wanted to put up there again the HLC requirements for our focus visit for April 2020. Um, and so what was kind of guiding our work this semester and through till April 2020 is the requirements from HLC that we develop an assessment glossary and common assessment language, um, both for dead end and for program assessment. Um, in regards to our general education outcomes assessment, um, they uh, suggest or they um, uh, dictated that we develop an institution-wide assessment plan for general education, which includes identifying measurements um, for institutional comparison of data, as well as um, they would like to see uh, at the program level uh, an institution-wide program assessment plan, as well as identifying and that includes identifying student learning outcomes for all academic programs, and also a plan for systematically assessing these outcomes, and that includes both maps and timelines. And then for both general education and program assessment, it involves the collection, analysis, and sharing of data, um, determining adjustments based on that analysis, and then evidence of prioritization and budgeting based on data. So that is um, the criteria for our April 2020 focus visit. And then I've, we've shared this before in other venues, but um, wanted to just share kind of our vision for this work, right? We want to kind of change from a compliance mindset where like, yes, we do to accomplish these things for our focus visit, but really we want to kind of move more towards this um, mindset of learning improvement. And so our vision for this work and kind of um, shifting our culture is to develop and implement a systematic, sustainable structure for student learning outcomes assessment at the program and general education level in academic affairs. So yes, we do have these outcomes that we need, these targets that we need to hit for our focus visit. But really, this work and what we're building here is a um, systematic, sustainable structure for student learning outcomes assessment. And so we'll kind of share it again. There are two-phase project plan. Um, as a reminder, this first phase was the process mapping and structure. And that's this academic year, so this fall semester, looking next to next spring semester, we're really focusing on building that foundation for both our program and our general education outcomes assessment. Where the next academic year, so fall um, 19 to spring 2020, we'll really be focusing on implementing our um, processes, um, uh, assessing and allocating resources based on those results. So I want to spend a little bit of time in this um, process to talk about what we've accomplished so far this semester. And so uh, this fall, so really from the end of August, we all came back to school, back on campus, the end of August to this point, um, I wanted to kind of highlight or talk about some of the highlights about this process. So um, we have held six out of seven open forums. We have one last open forum that we're holding this semester. Um, we've identified 55 faculty partners in this work. Um, we've held two internal trainings with 100% participation from our target, target audience. Um, we've had two workshops with 100% participation from our target audience. Um, we've also created or revised and then also evaluated 124 sets of program level student learning outcomes. And this one's huge, right? When I counted this up, I was like, this is crazy. This is amazing, amazing, amazing work. So with those 55 faculty um, who are involved, um, again, create or revise, and I would say a bulk created. Um, that's my impression of the work. I can go back and double, like double check all of that, but I think if, if it wasn't heavy, heavy revisions on what was already existing, a lot of faculty were creating these outcomes. And then also, again, the work of the assessment committee to ensure that all of these outcomes were evaluated. Um, we evaluated them with a standard rubric for um, all the evaluation teams used. It was a shared rubric. 
and um, all of the outcomes had to meet the criteria and the rubric in order to move forward, and that happened. So um, we had 100% of the um, program outcomes move forward um, through that evaluation process. And then also, um, as of yesterday, as of after the academic senate meeting yesterday, um, the assessment committee uh, revised our general education outcomes, and the academic assessment committee has approved those. And so um, the intended outcomes, and right at currently that proposal is pending leadership's approval. And so I wanted to share a little bit of the feedback from the workshop. This we um, had faculty fill out an evaluation form for those who participated in our first workshop. And so it was, we had an external consultant come in um, and speak to the program assessment plan um, developers. And then we had that hands-on workshop time where um, we got a large chunk of that work done in that in that workshop. So we had faculty fill out the evaluation form. Um, there were 31 evaluation forms from faculty who participated in that workshop, and so we were able to capture um, feedback from the faculty uh, on uh, points like um, the workshop content. Um, so what we asked faculty was the workshop content met my needs. We asked. Um, on a scale of one to five, from strongly disagree to strongly agree, and 29 faculty either agreed or strongly agreed with that statement. Um, and we actually did not have anyone who disagreed or strongly disagreed. We just had two faculty who indicated neither agreed nor disagreed, so three on that scale. Um, so that's huge, right, to hold a, a workshop like that and to have faculty agree that the workshop content met their needs. Um, the second point that I just wanted to pull out um, was the content presented was applicable to my work. I think this is really, really important as well if the aligning our support for faculty um, with the work that they're um, being asked to do. And so again, 29 faculty agreed or strongly disagreed. Um, I did not know whether or not those were the same two faculty who did not uh, agree or disagree, but again, two faculty didn't disagree with that statement, but they just indicated that they um, neither agreed nor disagreed, so three on that scale. So, so really, really, really great feedback from faculty in that workshop. So as I was going through more of the qualitative comments, um, that faculty left for um, as feedback for the workshop. Overall, they kind of um, faculty appreciated three common themes. And so the first one was the designated time to work. And I think that really speaks to the resources that are being provided um, for this work to happen. So that space um, and that time to um, get the work accomplished. And the second thing that faculty appreciated was the supportive environment to accomplish the work. So again, having the resources available um, to ask questions, to have the content knowledge to accomplish the work, and then having that um, opportunity for one-on-one -on -one interaction to answer questions and make sure um, that faculty feel supported. So that was the second one. And then um, most comments also um, highlighted the opportunity to collaborate with other faculty from across the institution. So we had numerous comments um, where faculty uh, described interactions they had either with faculty in their own department as they kind of sat next to each other, sat at tables, and were able to have conversations. Um, they also pulled out the um, uh, conversations that they had with other faculty across the institution. So again, kind of those informal conversations to be able to speak with faculty who are outside of their department, but to continue to have engaged in a dialogue around the work that was being done. Um, and then they also commented on being able to engage with the assessment committee members and have those conversations as well. So those were kind of the three themes. One of my favorite comments um, that I pulled out was a faculty member noted that he found this process very helpful and said that it will improve my program, which I think is probably one of the highest compliments that we could receive in doing this work, is that faculty found it helpful and then also that this work and the work that we're doing around assessment, um, we can, we've can caught the vision, we can see how this will be helpful in improving program uh, programs, and then ultimately what that means is um, a learning improvement for our students. So the next piece that I wanted to speak a little bit about was our general education outcomes. Um, so to go a little bit more in depth on that process, um, if you have not been a part of it so far, um, we revised our nine general education outcomes down to five. And so the, um, the logic and the reasoning behind this was to re you know, reduce the number so that they were truly general education outcomes or reflective of learning that's occurring across the institution, um, but to also align it with the AACNU value rubric. So align the general education outcomes 
um, with the national standard, but also a tool that will allow us to um, share a common vocabulary um, and also share a tool for assessing those general education outcomes. Um, we held three open forums, so we submitted um, sort of a proposal, had faculty provide um, feedback, and we held three open forums to seek input from the campus community. All of those outcomes went, uh, were sent out to all full-time and adjunct faculty via Vice President Baker. Um, so I'll, everyone had an opportunity to look over them, to provide feedback. Um, and then yesterday, I took those um, uh, the proposal to Academic Senate, and Academic Senate approved that proposal for the five general education outcomes. So the current status is that um, those outcomes will then be um, boarded to the Vice President's office, um, and so it's pending leadership. So now to talk a little bit about where we are right now. So um, from the information that I just shared with you, those program level outcomes that we were working on this semester, um, we have identified student learning outcomes for all academic programs. That was a huge lift this semester. Um, and so that was a big piece of the work that you're focused on. And so that has been accomplished. And again, that has been submitted to the curriculum process to become part of the institution's documentation. And um, those uh, outcomes will be going to the curriculum committees December 6th meeting for approval. So that is um, kind of the, where we are in the process for those. And then again, for the general education outcomes, Senate approved them yesterday, and um, those outcomes are pending leadership approval. So that's kind of where we are in those processes right now. And then I wanted to talk a little bit about the benefits of this work. So as you saw a few slides ago, um, we have you know, over 50, 55 faculty um, who are engaged in this process. And as a result of going through this work and engaging with this work this semester, these faculty have now six plus hours of professional development um, on assessment, our assessment processes, how to write student learning outcomes, and um, kind of moving towards how we assess the learning that our students, um, uh, what our students are learning. So whether that is at the program level, and then now moving to Forward towards looking at that through the lens of general education outcomes learning as well. So all of the faculty who are involved have those six plus hours of professional development. Um, we've grown, you know, the level of expertise in terms of assessment. Now there's over 50 faculty members who have the same um, level of knowledge. Um, kind of going into this process, it was pretty clear that we had some faculty who engaged with assessment for a long time and have a, a really deep knowledge of assessment. And then we had some of these faculty members who were maybe engaging with this topic for um, the first time or uh, the first time at this level. And so um, now we've really built that foundation of professional development um, across areas of the institution. And then in terms of communication, I think one of the best um, phrases that I've learned as part of this process is the um, the term process use. So going through evaluation, um, there is great work that's done there, right? Like the writing of outcomes and um, moving forward towards assessing. But this kind of phrase process use, is what are some of the other benefits that are gained as a result of engaging this work? So the professional development is absolutely one of those pieces, having a more um, educated faculty body on assessment practices. Um, but then also, this is you know kind of some of the things that we've been engaging with as we've been doing this professional development, as we've been training, as we've been working um, together in the workshops. Um, together, collectively, we've been developing a common assessment language as we've um, heard de uh, terms defined and as we've heard the external consultants speak on some of these topics, we're developing collectively a common assessment language, which is one of the um, issues that the HLC noted is that across our faculty body, um, across our institution, um, with staff, administration, um, and faculty, we were not using the same terminology um, equally across the institution. We were defining things differently. So one of the things that we're really gaining throughout this process is starting to develop that shared vocabulary, that shared language. Um, also, we're spending time like making meaning of these concepts and as aging in dialogue, coming to um, a shared understanding of what it means to engage in assessment work um, and what it means to, um, to develop outcomes and what that means for our institution. And one of the things that I noted, I pointed this out at Academic Senate yesterday as well, but what I've heard from um, conversations I've had individually with faculty, but also being a part of conversations at both of the workshops, 
Um, and then also just kind of hearing conversations that were happening is that I can really see the conversation and I've witnessed the conversation really moving from what's going on in my course to what's going on in our curriculum. So raising that level of assessment knowledge beyond just course level assessment, but really starting to engage in talking about program level assessment, that's more than just one faculty member, right? And so you start to raise awareness and um, raise the conversation beyond just what students are learning in my class, but what are they learning across the curriculum um, and engaging with other faculty members, courses, and learning that occurs there. And so I think that's a really, really valuable piece of the work that we're engaging in this semester. So just to talk a little bit about what's next. Um, again, we're not gonna dive too deep into um, each semester or the work that's going on. We will have that next open forum to do that. Um, but kind of looking forward towards spring, some of the work um, that will be occurring, uh, the spring faculty workshop will be um, covering gen ed outcomes and uh, assessment of general education outcomes. Um, we'll be talking and uh, engaging in more work around mapping those outcomes, both from the um, course to the program level and then the program to gen ed. Um, do a little bit more professional development about understanding our assessment processes and building effective assessments, and then also talking about using the value rubrics that we use to um, align our general education outcomes. We will be doing an offering some uh, professional development over the summer and then kind of fall 2019 kicking off that second phase of our project plan. So talking about implementing assessments and actually implementing the assessments, um, facilitating conversation around those and analysis of the data and then talking about and um, really implementing change as a result of the assessment and the data that's collected. So if you're interested in doing a little bit more of a deep dive for that, looking ahead and what we are, um, the work that we're going to be accomplishing next semester, that final open forum for this semester will be held on December 4th at 2.30 p.m. So um, please come back, ask questions, um, and you'll hear a little bit more about the work that we're engaging in um, next semester. So do you guys have any questions for me about any parts of that project plan um, or any of the work or if you have any comments, because you guys are all engaged in work, so any comments on kind of how things are going or feedback on the process. But, yeah. I did have a yeah. question on the faculty forum um, work the workshop. Will that be both admin and full time? Will they both have the benefit of this? So we're in conversations on that currently. Yeah, so it's a full time faculty workshop. Adjunct don't have a contractual requirement to attend, um, but in conversations right now, how we can best engage with adjunct. TBD. Any other questions or comments or just feedback on the process so far? Observations from participating? I thought some will be doing better next semester. Yeah. So we're really in the process of you know, planning that out. Right, there's a reason why there's more details to come. <laughs> there's more details are still being worked out. <laughs> I think, I think that, I mean, you guys are doing an amazing job with this, because I mean, like we were given this this impossible looking task, and you're managing to handle it with grace and communicate with everyone, and the workshops were amazing, and I mean, you're keeping everybody really well informed, and I, I don't know, I just, I, I don't know if anything could have been done that cause. Yeah, I agree. I just felt I should have joined the assessment committee instead of the people. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's room, right? Is there room? It's not too oh, I don't know. There's it's all kind of discouraged me because he's already in the assessment committee. If you so. want to be a part of it, you're yeah. welcome to be a part of it. Yes. We can figure out exact <laughs> voting membership. But yes, if you want to come and be a part of it, you are more than welcome. The more faculty involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just started talking about it beginning of September, and here we are in November, and we have a lot of these things going on. Just, just, just an honor. The faculty have been great. Yes. Collectively, they've been amazing, willing to engage, willing to jump in. 
going to learn, which is you know, a wonderful, wonderful treat, right? So you'll say, like, I'm not sure, I don't know about something, and going to learn more. So that's been, that's been awesome. I remember my very first meeting. Um, I was talking with him when I came on this. My very first meeting I came to, and I was just meeting all of you for the first time. Now. And the people were so much saying at the meeting that they expected there to be a lot of pushback mm -hmm. from that. And I said that I obviously don't know how things work here, but I didn't really see that being a problem because at points like this, the fact that they didn't really care about the quality of what they're doing, you know, I, I think most people want to know that their work is effective. And that's what I said to you in that, in that first conversation. And I think that's kind of been the thing. I think, I think, I mean, not that I've talked to everyone about this, but everybody I've talked to seems to agree that this is an important thing. You know? mm -hmm. So I don't think we're looking as much pushback as what people are. Well, I from the union. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I think it's from the union meeting. Like, I, don't, I didn't see anything. I'm an office mate. Beth is my office mate. She is amazing. She, is she, amazing. she knows everything. <laughs> Not only as I said, but whatever I need. I don't need to go anywhere, just have a bed. Yeah. Really, I'm, honestly, any, no, yesterday I was asking about peer mentor for oh, she told you with an email. Oh, you know that. <laughs> so, it's great, really. Yeah, she's been wonderful. Really committed to the effort. I just want to second that, too, on the faculty meeting thing, because, um, I mean, we, after that first workshop, um, evaluated so many program outcomes, and some of them needed some additional work, which is why we had a second workshop, etc. But like so many, I want to say 50 percent or so of what sent in went through, you know, with the rubric on the first round. I think it just shows like faculty members, you know, nobody's phoning in on this. Everybody is really engaged in the work, and they're really, um, you know, about making it meaningful and. Um, I think I have been super I think the next step is going to be very helpful in terms of creating those assessments and mm -hmm. for the entire conference. Yeah, any, any suggestions or things that we should be considering or thoughts as we kind of start to write the common? Right. So like how, yeah. yeah. Well, let's say I'm assigned uh, you know, to create the assessment for the company. And I can get that you know, but if you're like, okay, so it's going to be my questions, what I think should be assessed. Of course, I'm going to ask for feedback, but it's going to be difficult to make everybody on the same page, whether they agree, okay, that this is, you know, um, I don't know, a specific problem or, or an exercise that is going to assess that further. Do you have models for um, that kind of decision making already in your department? Do you feel like there's a mechanism for that kind of decision making or not? No, that be something that's new that's really So do you feel like this may be some kind of professional development about how to engage in those conversations or how to that might be helpful, just how to uh, not only how to engage in the conversation, but how to actually design mm -hmm. an assessment tool that can be used semester after semester. And the way we did that at another institution was we created a set of multiple choice questions for accounting programs, right? And then we would administer those at the end of the semester. Um, and it was administered through D2L. Mm -hmm. So then it was very easy to collect the data and evaluate the data. Because if it's on paper, like, that's going to be so useful. And lack of consistency. Mm -hmm. Bad if it's, so maybe that's my suggestion. And whatever we design, it should probably have be administered for the blackboard. Of course, the kind of electronic email Yeah, and so I think that kind of what I'm hearing from that response is um, engaging in conversations about how to engage in the conversation, right? And so having some of the professional development thinking around um, those kind of decision making structures within a department context. And then the other piece that I'm thinking about is just making sure that we are um, accommodating a wide variety of needs. We can start to talk about creating assessments and then analyzing data, making sure that we are showing faculty all of the choices that are available and all the different ways that it can be best fit to your mm -hmm. discipline. I think we could look at 
most want to say based on the assistance from the faculty line. Okay, so let's say we administer this assessment tool in all of the classes, right? Because we look at the entire account, right? And then well, some instructors will get, you know, really good results, and then some instructors might not get so good results, and how will that impact them? So, I mean, that's, that's just coming from another institution, right? Because that was something. Yeah, I think that's great, and I think that's part of the conversation moving forward, making sure that we are emphasizing learning improvements, right? Okay, and sure the idea is that's a polish. <laughs> yeah, right, right. And I think that we have one really, really good shot at making sure faculty feel that they're supported to use the assessment results for learning improvement, right? And I think that. What my hope and my belief is, is that when we can show and tell stories of faculty who had, like by all accounts, terrible assessment results, but then those results were then used to allocate resources, to support student learning, because ultimately what bad assessment results mean is that students aren't given an opportunity to show that they're learning that content, right? And so when we talk about allocating resources and ensuring that students um, are able to demonstrate their learning, that's what we're after. We're after learning improvement, and it's not an evaluation of teaching ability, right, at all. So I think that once we can tell those stories, right, we're, we're about a year away from doing that, but once we're able to tell those stories of how there are these assessment results, these changes that were made, these resources that were allocated, and then it led to improvement of student learning, I'm hoping it's my belief that some of that fear will subside and we can all embrace this process as something that will ultimately benefit students. I do agree with you. Remember the first meeting that you were presenting, mm -hmm. what's going to happen? Yeah. People were so afraid of starting something. And the question, what's going to affect me? What I'm going to, I, I don't see any problem. I didn't I mean, it with you. I think it will be on spot in the yeah. early stages. Yeah, <laughs> yeah really. Yeah. I remember the first meeting. I was, I was kind of scared. Sure, I think that's really bad. And I think you handled it right. Really you were yeah. answering the questions about the for the stipend and was why I'm doing this. But I don't know. I remember but the first meeting that we started. Yeah, it was kind of scary meeting. Yeah. But yeah. after that, like, I think it's so much genuine. more. Once the fact we start doing this and see the value and the aspect to it that help you to improve your teaching. I think that's where we turn faculty around. Mm -hmm. Right now, I think in the past, we just collect the assessment report, then a hundred percent of the right? So that approach does not work at all in that name. So the next step is we really need to be able to compile actions based on assessment report. What has changed? Now, changes can take place in multiple places when we see the assessment too, right? When they perform the assessment, then changes can take place within six weeks because you know the test and some materials are missing in this topic that allow improvement teaching. But on the back end, even going beyond the six week, looking at, for example, a summary score that we know the students are not as strong as students in term, for example, in terms of critical thinking, that informs us to really work on the curriculum. Mm -hmm. So there's many angles the assessment can be informed when it comes to improvement teaching learning, not only the practice in the classroom, but also curriculum alignment, making sure that the uh, curriculum is stuck vertically in meaningful learning. Otherwise, you know, um, the improvement, the ability, the goal will not be there. And then kind of going back to what we were saying, oh, I think these are really motivating conversations that faculty enjoy right, engaging in. These are, these are questions about the curriculum, these are questions about student learning, and are they learning, and what are they learning, and so I think that as we move forward in this process, um, having um, faculty leaders who are willing to step up and engage in this process um, and show and tell these stories of learning improvement, I think that's where we might be able to, and I think we will be able to, engage a wider audience of the faculty and kind of overcome some of those fears and some of the um, the reservations that some faculty have. It was really because look at what happened now after the two months ago, the first meeting with 
I remember actually, I'm just looking at you, you didn't know what, how to handle the <laughs> questions. I was there. It's, I didn't ask questions. <laughs> but it, it was really something I was it's going to happen. I think too there's an opportunity to really um, enhance conversation, to really try assessment to discuss with the teacher, or even actually research. Absolutely. Right? Otherwise, those activities will not be embraced as something of value. Right, tying into like the conversation side. Yeah. Teaching, student learning, absolutely. Any other comments or feedback, things that we should be keeping in mind as we move forward to next semester? Just keep them to the board. <laughs> All right, thank you guys so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. See you guys, or hopefully see you on the week.